All right, everyone, Peach Al here, and we're back. And on today's episode, we're going to be working on the brand new 2023 Royal Enfield Hunter 350. And on today's episode, we're going to learn how to do the valve adjustment, the tank removal, and a full oil change. On top of that, we're going to probably have another section where we're going to do an overall checkup on the bike before it gets back on the road. Make sure everything's torqued to spec, everything's nice and tight. That's another video, but for today, general maintenance on this guy. So let's get to work because this is Pinch Al's Garage. So what you're gonna need for your uh, DIY, <laughs> the bike key, brand new oil filter, um, where is it? Yeah. The crush washer for the drain plug, put that in there, a valve cover gasket as well. And then to get started on your DIY here, we need to remove the side panel so you can access the seat so we have access to the tank so unlock it pop it off then you have your little pull cord right here for your seat pull up and away Then, you guys have, can see everything here now. So what we're looking at is this bolt right here that holds the tank. So this is the first bolt that we have to remove. Uh, after that, we're gonna have to, once we pop the tank up, we're gonna have to look underneath and see what lines need to be removed before the tank can be yanked off. Before you set the tank, take the tank off completely, Find a place outside of your garage so you're not spilling the, uh, the gas fumes. It will drain a little bit. Uh, I recommend angling the tank up at a, like a good 45 degree with something underneath it. Uh, it will prevent the t uh, tank from leaking the entire time when you're working on your bike. Be ready to lose some gas. It's okay. This is so cheap to add gas in these things. But again, that's just one uh, precaution you need to take. So you're going to need an 8 socket on the on the left and a 10 millimeter socket on the right. Uh, Royal Enfield has this weird thing about doing things like this, two different size bolts, or like a bolt and a nut that's different from each other. It's quite annoying. And because of that, you know, you don't have a consistent amount of sockets and stuff like that. It's, it's weird. It's kind of, like I said, it's kind of annoying, but you guys will figure it out. I guess it's a Royal Enfield thing, you know? All right, so eight on the back, 10 on the front. And honestly, get a wrench to hold this and use a ratchet to tighten on the other side. That bolt's really weak. So now the tank is unbolted. So what we're gonna do is uh, move the camera angle down this way and up so you guys can see that. And then I'll pretty much do the best I can to narrate what's underneath. So now that we're here, the gas tank, it's unbolted. We need to make sure we now we take off everything underneath. There's a couple sensors that need to be unplugged, more than likely your sending unit, your fuel pump, uh, probably a vent line and a fuel line. So let's see what we can find. Okay, so the fuel line's on this side, which I see, let's see. Okay, here, right here is, I believe looks like some type of uh, sensor, so we're going to unplug this one. This guy. Let's see. This is for the ignition coil. Let's 
So the fuel line is kind of a pinch line, which you can do right here. So you can remove the fuel line from right here. And then we probably learn how to cap it. More than likely, ah, there's my two vent lines right here. So there's two vent lines right here, right next to each other. Got one off. The other one's kind of weird. It's like, bent. it's really pinched. So I got the two. Okay, then you have your fuel line here, which is a double pinch. I unplug this guy. Yep, there's another wire right here. So you have two vent lines over here. I think you have your um, sending unit over here. And then there's two lines over here, one for the fuel line, and then one for, I believe, the pump itself. It's really annoying because it's such a tight fit. Got that one. All right, last but not least is the fuel line. All right, wish me luck here. What's going on? Oh, the sensor is tucked in underneath here. There you go. You just can see that. So, fuel line, sending a fuel pump, two vacuum lines right there. Hopefully you guys can see all that. Lay this outside. Nice piece of cardboard. You guys can now see that. So, right here, and this, these two lines, vacuum lines, or uh, breather lines. Um, this one on the left was really, really pinched. You guys could see that it's pinched really badly. And this one was fine. So we got to figure out why it did that. Okay. Then we had to disconnect this wire this one on this side and then we had fuel you had the fuel line and then the pump for this one and then that should be it and now we have access to the three bolts on the valve cover and the spark plug wire right here which we have to unplug and then unbolt the valve cover and see what else needs to come off so right now I'm taking off the the valve cover it just uses a 10 millimeter wrench uh, you can't really get a socket into here and what I'm gonna do is yank out the spark plug here and then you'll see hopefully you got a better view of this you'll see right here there's one and there's two three bolts in total three 10 millimeter bolts we're gonna take all three of them off and we're gonna see if we don't have to take anything else off to take the valve cover out if it doesn't need anything else, then we're pretty golden. If we have to do some uh, removal of some of equipment right up here, we'll do it. But I'm hoping we don't have to. So bear with me because this is a learning experience on my own. Um, so we're learning as we go. Okay. Now that we have all three bolts removed, we're going to try to see if we can pick it up and slide it out.
Okay, so currently this guy is in the way. So it's just a pinch sensor. Pull it back. Let's see if that makes a difference. Nope. So this sensor has to come out right here. Which is bolted on. Okay, that's what's currently hitting on my way out. Oh, there we go. All right, so we have to remove, uh, where is it? This bracket here. So we have to remove the uh, ignition coil. It has to be moved. It's, it's catching right here on the top of the valve cover. And that's just, it's just not gonna come out. Unless, nope. No, it's not gonna let it come out. Well, that's no fun. Okay, well, we'll figure it out right now. So what's happening uh, currently is that it's getting caught right here on the top of this valve cover. Um, whichever way I try to slide it in and out, it just wants to snag and I don't wanna yank it anymore. Okay, so found it. There's three 10 millimeter bolts right here. They're hard to see, so I'm gonna just show you the bracket right here. There's three 10 millimeters. Push it back, slide it over to the right. And then you'll see the whole harness right there. And the valve cover just pops right up. It's ridiculous. So much easier still than my uh, Interceptor 650. So what I'm gonna do is the gasket's caught here. There we go. Okay. So now that that's done, we now have full access to doing the valves now. And we got to get them nice and torqued to spec. Um, we only have two valves, intake and exhaust. Uh, we also have to show you guys how to crank the engine over, so I'll show you guys how to do that. So now the valve cover is off. You can see all the stuff that we kind of unplugged here too. But this is a lot quicker than the Interceptor 650. Um, so now we have the exhaust valve and the intake valve on this side. Uh, I have been researching about doing a cam. I'm probably gonna do a cam upgrade on this bike. Uh, from what I read is a cam intake and exhaust with a tune can give you guys an extra five horsepower. So uh, this thing looks cake to do a cam on this. So I'm probably gonna do a cam on this. <laughs> it looks so easy. Um, so I'm excited to do that next uh, down the road. So first we gotta access the the port that cranks the. Uh, let me show you guys here. It cranks the engine over, which is down here at the bottom. This guy right here. You unbolt this. And there's a hole. Then there's a spot right here where you put a socket in, where it lets you rotate the engine. Now you can only rotate the engine counterclockwise. Do not rotate your engine clockwise. It's bad for the bike. Uh, bad for the clutch, so just don't do it, okay? Counterclockwise. 
All right. So for this guy to come off, you need a 14 millimeter Allen. All right. To crank your engine, you need a 17 millimeter socket. And remember, rotate it right. Do not rotate it to to the um, to the left. Okay, um, similar to the uh, Interceptor 650 on the cam, on the cam gear, uh, I'm going to get you guys up here now. There is a marking on it that tells you left or right. Show you guys in just a second. So right here, you can see an L on there. So that's going all the way down. So that's for the left valve. Trying to find the right valve adjustment. It's kind of tricky. I'm going to have to look up the manual and look up what it is for the right valve, but I'll show you guys in just a moment. All right, so now that we have the bike set to TDC, um, you see right here, there's a good easy way indication. This bolt, there's a, on the back of the cam, there's a little hole that sits on top of it. Uh, that's kind of the, where you lock the cam in for to set it to TDC. Um, and that's where you're going to set and adjust your two valves here on the exhaust and intake side. Now, exhaust is 0 0.007 and intake is 0 0.003 on the US specs. On uh, metric, 0 0.078 and then uh, 1.78 on the um, on the exhaust side so we're gonna want to get our feeler gauge in and check for drag very minimal drag it's still dragging a little bit but not bad and then we're gonna check over here on the intake side Pretty good. Got a little bit of drag is what you want. You don't want it to snag or be very difficult. Um, you're gonna have a odd time over here getting a correct feel for it because of the angle that you have to do the adjustment in. So you got to just play around with it until you get a good angle because you're gonna get a false reading if you don't get it uh, angled correctly. Again, exhaust is really good. intake is very good so we're happy with that if they were off pretty much you would loosen this up and tighten it down and get it to where you want it to make sure that the feeler gauge works uh, to spec but we're pretty much within specifications after 300 miles from the factory break-in so now we're gonna put the valve cover back on tighten everything back down I left the factory valve cover on just because uh, I, I didn't receive a cam seal. No, 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 no. Actually, I'm going to replace the valve cover because I do have the cam seal, which is this guy right here. 
So we'll pop this guy out, pull this out, put some fresh RTV in it, and clean it all out and get you guys up and going for this next part. All right, using your Allen wrench, remove this guy. And then you gotta yank this guy out. Hell about a ton of RTV. So we gotta get, yeah, I want breakfast. Please and thank you. So now, you gotta go through this and do a good job cleaning the surface. You wanna remove as much as the old RTV as possible cause that will generate leaks. So if you got a razor blade, you can scrape the top surface and work on the hoop here and then we'll get once you get that cleaned off we'll install the new valve cover gasket so now with the surface completely cleaned off we're going to add some fresh black rtv and try to keep it to a minimal you don't want to put too much on there where you just create a new leak and you end up being in a worse situation than you were to begin with so you want to get that as light as you can just get it all over there and then what you want to do is a little bit on this edge right here just for safekeeping. That's it. You have enough RTV for your gasket. As long as you clean the rest of the surface, then you're good to go. So, I go this way, slide this down nice and slow, and then lay the gasket down. Okay, um, you can try to install it with the valve cover on. Actually, you can. Oh, I didn't think about that. I'm thinking like the Interceptor 650, where well, you can't do that. You actually can install the gasket. Hopefully it didn't mess anything up. No, it could be good. So you should be able to just plop right on. I think that valve is just a little bit in the way, or this plug. Try it again one more time. RTV to seal.
All right, that's lame. What I wanted to do didn't work. So I'm going to have to try to walk the gasket. Oh, no. Okay, cool. That lined up over there. That lined up over there. All right, good. The gasket completely lined up. So, install your your uh, valve cover bolts back on. You have three. Before you do anything else, get these all nice and snug. And then we'll focus on rewiring the bike again. Okay, valve cover is back on nice and snug. Next step is to plug in this guy. He plugs in right here. He has a weather protector, so make sure that goes back on. Now we have this one here. One wire is plugged in underneath it. Oopsies. It's got a little clip here. And then this one goes down like that. So these are ground cables, so you guys know. So don't be super scared about them. They just go in one spot. This bracket slides in here. And it's got one, two, three holes. Um, one for the top ground, one for the bottom ground, and then there's another one here just, just to hold the bracket in place, okay? Um, that'll go for that. And then that sensor plugged in, you saw that. And then we have the spark plug wire that goes here. Uh, then on the other side, we have the two vent tubes right here. And then um, you have the fuel line and the fuel pump sensor right there as well. And that should be it. So now that we got the spark plug, the tube installed, the bracket, everything's set on this side. Don't forget your vent tubes. You're gonna need those in just a minute. Pretty vital to your next step. On the other side, you got your fuel injector line, or your fuel line, and then there's one more sensor in here. Fuel pump line right here as well, okay? This guy plugs in, but it goes in through a grommet on the side of it, and then you push it in and plug it in. Now we got valve adjusted, valve cover installed, gasket, everything over here. I'm gonna get ready to bring the tank over and then plug these two in. When you're facing down like this on the tank, there's a left one and a right one, okay guys? One's smaller, one's larger than the other. Okay, those two are in. Next step here is the fuel line. Okay, last but not least, fuel connection. Not in all the way. That's the slide in, so 
<sighs> there we go. Now we're in. Now I'm just going to line the tank up. There you go. Okay. So if everything was successful and you got it all plugged in correctly, you should be able to plug it in and fire it up. So let's listen to it. I haven't changed the oil yet, but that's okay for this scenario because I changed the oil right after. Okay, it's in neutral. Sounds good. Not as clackety as I had it before. Let it warm up. change and I walk you guys through that process and then put the seat back on and we're gonna go give it a ride see you guys in a little bit all right so there's a 17 millimeter nut underneath right here that's right down here in the bottom of the bank take that out it's got a crush washer on it you guys already see that. this one has a uh, copper one and then we have the three hole, three bolts right here on the side. That covers the oil filter. All right, so here in uh, Ramona, uh, it's kind of hard to get the 1550 weight uh, oil. So uh, Val um, Valvoline does have a 2050 that meets the very specific JSO MA2 API SL requirement for this bike. It's very, very specific. Make sure you get this style weight, uh, this this um, weight requirement. Um, it's perfect for this bike. Um, it is a fat, uh, flat tappet valve system, so I'd usually recommend throwing a little bit of, of a zinc additive just for added uh, flavor. I like doing zinc additives on all flat tappet valves. It just extends the lives of the valves. Valves love zinc in the engine, so just dump a little bit in there, and it's very safe with your bike um, so I drained it took this out just as a reminder it's gonna spill a little bit of oil on the side it's just gonna happen you can definitely put a rag on here to prevent it um, but it's not gonna do very much for you to clean up so you're just gonna burn a little bit of oil on your ride nothing crazy do a quick cleanup on the inside So we're going to put the filter in first. Okay. Filter goes in like this. Make sure the spring is sticking out. Filter housing. Do your best you can to center the uh, filter to the um, to the housing, so you can make sure you get the spring centered and aligned, so the, the oil filter has the right pressure going across to it.
get these nice and tight. Okay. Brand new crush washer, uh, straight from the dealer. Awkward to put this one in. There you go. So as in the manual, it states uh, 2.1 quarts of oil for a refill. So I bought three quarts. You have your fill marker here, low and high. You obviously want to be on the high point uh, when filling. So you got this guy right here, which is your fill hole. Uh, be right back. So this is the zinc additive that we use religiously for flat tap and valves. I also use this during my break-in process for breaking in motors. I use about a quarter bottle. Not much. Again, it's just zinc. Um, it's really, really good for your motor, so. Fill it with one quart. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna use my homemade boat funnel because this is messy. Going too fast. What's going on? Oh, it's coming out of the side. Or slower. That's so annoying. Once you fill it, and then we'll show you guys what to do next. 
All right, so we're back. Oil change is done. 2.1 quarts is about what I was able to put in it. Um, I did forget to mention, besides the 17 millimeter on this side, uh, drain bolt, there's one more. There's a cover with two 8 millimeters. That has to be um, unbolted under this side. If you don't do that, you will not drain all the oil. Um, you'll see it's smoking because that's the oil that spilled onto it with the, the uh, uh, exhaust. But besides that though, bike runs really good. Uh, no more uh, valve clankety clanks. That's gone. All I have the clanking noise now the exhaust note. The exhaust note on this thing is pretty cool. Sounds like a little tiny Harley. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, again, about 2.1 quarts is all it needs to fill this guy. And if that, Honestly, I think two quarts was just about enough. But again, you can go 2.1. Um, the Lucas uh, additive, I mean, you subtract that from your overall amount. And it should be more than enough oil for you. And that's it. After that, enjoy. Happy riding. Put another 2,500, uh, 3,000 miles on this and then do it all over again. Um, thanks for watching this episode of Pinchao's Garage with our Hunter 2020, our 2023 Hunter 350 right here at Pinchao's Garage. All right. Peace out. And you guys have yourself a wonderful day.